Unit 8, Stimulating Beverages. Caffeine is the substance that makes these beverages stimulating. Caffeine is a naturally occurring plant alkaloid, and it acts as a central nervous system stimulant in humans. It temporarily increases wakefulness, causes faster thought processes, and increases physical stamina. However, at high doses, it is toxic. The effects of coffee consumption have been uh, subject to many studies. Uh, some have linked caffeine in coffee to birth defects. Um, they haven't been consistently repeatable, but it's recommended pregnant women avoid large amounts of caffeine. Coffee also contains some antioxidants, which may provide a small degree of protection against some cancers. Uh, caffeine may provide athletes with small but measurably better reaction times and physical coordination. The effects generally start soon after consumption, that's within minutes to several minutes, and wear off in a few hours, which means depending on the level of physical activity, um, how much has been consumed and that sort of thing, can be anywhere from two hours, three hours to five or six hours. Coffee, the coffee plant is native to Ethiopia. It's been said it was discovered by a shepherd trying to stay awake to guard his flock against predators at night. He noticed that uh, when the flock animals were eating certain beans or cherries, actually, he called them, uh, from a certain shrub, that they were more active, more frisky. So he tried chewing on some of these himself and discovered that it was easier for him to stay awake. So at first, the coffee cherries were eaten raw. Uh, later, they were mixed with fat to make them somewhat more palatable. Actually roasting the beans or the seeds inside these coffee cherries uh, to make a drink was started in Yemen in the 1300s. And the first coffee house in America opened in 1669. Now, as I said, coffee is native to Ethiopia, but from there it was traded to countries east along the spice routes. The Dutch discovered coffee, so to speak, on Java, an island in Indonesia. From there they took it to Holland, then introduced it to Brazil. The French introduced it to the Caribbean and Central America. And today, Brazil is the largest coffee producer in the world. This map shows where coffee is grown, but we're also going to use it to take a look at the spread of coffee. So coffee is native to this region of Africa that includes Ethiopia. It was traded from there along the spice routes all the way to the east to the island of Java where it was discovered by Europeans. From here, the Europeans took it all the way back to Europe. From Europe, they then spread it to their colonies. So the Dutch spread it to Brazil. The French took it to the Caribbean and South America. Some Europeans uh, had established colonies in Africa, and so... It was brought to Africa. It also moved naturally through trade uh, across the uh, continent that way. As you can see down here, there are two types of coffee commonly grown commercially, uh, Canifora and Arabica. And if you look on the chart, uh, you can see that the uh, Canifora is grown mostly in Africa, also grown here in Madagascar, and a little bit in Southeast Asia. Arabica 
has a much larger growing range and there are some areas um, that grow both. This is a photograph of the London Coffee House in Philadelphia. It opened around 1702. It still exists today. This is a picture of coffee cherries. Now, they're called cherries. Um, they look like cherries, which is why they were called cherries. Um, the coffee beans are the seeds that are inside these cherries, each one of these containing a seed. Coffee can be harvested either by hand or mechanically. Uh, when it's grown on large flatland plantations, it's usually harvested by a machine. Um, but because of the terrain where coffee tends to grow best, it's still harvested by hand quite often. Um, these best coffee growing regions are hilly mountainous regions and uh, shade grown coffees uh, grow under the shade of um, tropical rainforest type of plants, type of trees, and it makes it difficult to uh, get machinery in the area to harvest it. So those coffees are typically harvested by hand. Um, short discussion here of coffee drinks. These are the main coffee drinks. Um, there are many more and there are frozen coffees and all sorts of flavored coffees. But um, primarily we have a couple of ways of making coffee. We have regular coffee which can be percolated or drip type of coffee where water is dripped through the uh, ground coffee beans to flavor the water. You have espresso, you have cafe mocha, we have latte. Regular coffee made by roasting beans, then grinding them to a varying consistency depending on the exact process used and the, and the type of coffee maker. Then hot water passes through it, usually just by gravity, um, and flavors the, uh, flavors the water. Such coffee can be caffeinated or decaffeinated, serve black or sugar milk, all sorts of available flavorings. Now, espresso is strong coffee, and it's brewed by a special machine that forces extremely hot water, almost at the point of turning to steam, under very high pressure, through the coffee, which has been ground to almost the consistency of a powder. And as I said, it's a specialized machine that is needed to make espresso. Latte is espresso mixed with steamed milk. And you can see little decorations often added by the uh, commercial coffee house people. Cafe Mocha is espresso mixed with a chocolate syrup. Sometimes it's layered with steamed or whipped milk on top and often served with a garnish of spices like cinnamon. Decaffeinated coffee. Since uh, caffeine is a naturally occurring plant alkaloid and it exists all through the uh, coffee seed and in fact through the coffee cherry itself as well, um, in order to make decaffeinated coffee, this uh, caffeine has to be removed. There are several ways to do that, but the Swiss water process might be the most popular. Um, it simply uses water to dissolve the caffeine and carry it away. Now, in so doing, you may also lose a little of the uh, volatile oils, which give coffee its flavor, but uh, some of that can kind of be made up for by the roasting technique. Also, the heat of roasting coffee beans breaks down some caffeine. Therefore, coffee that's heavily roasted tastes stronger, but generally has less caffeine. Coffee and disease, there have been studies showing uh, lower incidence of Parkinson's disease in people who drink coffee. Um, the exact mechanism for that is under study, it's not known. 
um, could have something to do with caffeine, could have something to do with the other substances that exist in coffee. Some studies have linked coffee uh, to birth defects and caffeine to birth defects as well. Um, but other studies have been inconclusive. So probably best to err on the side of safety and avoid caffeine if you're pregnant. Coffee also contains several antioxidants, um, which some studies suggest may provide some degree of protection from some cancers.